ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Zoe Online Fellowship. In the very heart of this nation, there is a man. Which man? Prophet Elvis Mbonye, yes. A man who is anointed to preserve, increase, enlarge, and prosper every single person that tunes in every single Tuesday and everyone that gets to meet him. Not just physically, but even while you're watching the Zoe Online Fellowship. Thank you so much to all those that are watching us from different countries. We have, our countries continue to increase. We're actually now intercontinental. We have people watching from different continents. We have people watching from Europe, from Asia, from Africa. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for doing the great work. Continue inviting more people to make sure that they partake and they get to know what is happening in the realm of the spirit but then even physically through prophet Elvis Mbonye. To our audience on Zoom, you look beautiful, yes! <laughs> and you're very welcome to this wonderful Tuesday that never leaves anyone's life. The same, my name is Sharon Chomtisha Senyonga. I'm Simon Senyonga. Uh, yes, I would love to still remind everyone that life as you know it has been interrupted All right and because of that you're setting your heart to know only one thing that the lord is your only source your only provider he's the, your only source of everything that you need the hope that you need that the joy that you're looking for just get your heart set on only him tonight and you know that you'll receive that perfect peace that you've been searching for because of that the lord causes you to raise up higher and higher and higher and he can only cause you to soar high above any challenge that you've encountered so don't be shaken by anything going on in your life and that's why we have a prophet of Simonia would love to welcome the politicians and the society icons thank you so much for being a part of this very 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 special online broadcast of this fellowship and again we want to welcome our different men and women of God thank you so much for being a part of this very special broadcast the prophet highly honors and esteems you so even as you rise up wherever you are don't forget to share the hashtag the hashtag is hashtag prophet Elvis Simbonye on all the different social media platforms on all the different platforms invite somebody let them be a partaker of this glory and this joy tonight even as we celebrate what the Lord is doing hallelujah Come on, in every nation, every city, every home, let God arise and let His enemies be scattered. Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. He is glorified in our midst today. Come on, say, glorified. Glorified. Lift it high. Magnified.
just lift your hands and magnify the Lord. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, the Most High our habitation. There shall no evil befall us, so we can boldly stand and say, Nothing can touch me there. Nothing can harm me there. Nothing can reach me there. I love to be in your presence. Come on, declare with us. Nothing can touch me there. Nothing can harm me there. a beautiful thing to be in the presence of God but not even just the presence the manifest presence of God is in this place and so that means that anything that you want to see change anything that has stagnated in your life can actually change because the tangible presence is from this place to anyone and wherever you're watching from now I love it when Prophet Elvis Simone has actually told us before that he doesn't have to speak if the Lord doesn't tell him to he has also told us that he doesn't need to come for fellowship or attend or be in 
in a place if the Lord hasn't told him to. Now with that, we already, we've, we've already seen that, that there's a reason as to why he says what he says, that the timing is always perfect whenever he says things that he says. And for us to understand that indeed the Lord will never do anything without telling his prophet, the prophet of the last, of the prophet in this generation and the prophet at the forefront of this prophetic move in the last days. Now we've also seen that being very significant because because of prophet Elvis Moni, we've gotten to tap into the secrets of the world and anything that happens out there. And this we've seen with prophecies in the fields of the health sector, the finance sector, and even individual lives. So even when prophet Elvis Moni picks up on something as simple as a romantic relationship, it has a meaning and it's for us to understand what the Lord is exactly saying at that very moment. Now because he has a record of fulfilled prophecies all we can do is to let the prophet speak and you know that gets to awaken us to the reality of what indeed amos 3 7 says mm -hmm. that surely the lord god will do nothing but reveal his secret unto his servants the prophet that the lord can never do anything but he will reveal his mind so anything that the lord reveals mm -hmm. has actually been a secret to him but as soon as he reveals it then it's for our advantage now you who is watching right now there is something unique that you're picking from this particular prophetic fulfillment because the lord has then revealed unto you the secret so you know exactly how your life has to turn out only beautiful glorious and happy all through your entire destiny democratic republic of congo there is going to be true change the Democratic Republic of Congo has finally elected a new president. Their Felix Tshisekedi has surprisingly won the race. I had another prophetic experience here in the UK. Major banks had been hacked. They even started hacking in two credit card systems. Massive hack attack involving 100 million customers. Capital One, you have been hacked. In the hazy darkness of tomorrow's uncertainty, the power of prophecy is that glimmer of light cast in the events of the future to give hope, guidance, and direction. Through unique signs and prophetic fulfillments, Prophet Elvis Mbonyi is a true prophet approved of God. Through countless signs and unprecedented events, like the ones concerning the leadership of the United Kingdom, so I went to the UK, something new that was brewing. A man who has been cheered on, he was called Boris Johnson. In the UK, they have just announced that Boris Johnson will be the next Prime Minister. Boris Johnson is set to walk in this door behind me tomorrow as Britain's next Prime Minister. 7th January 2020. In the UK, the man that was prophesied by me, Boris Johnson, you'll start to hear talk, a lot of talk. I saw something like, uh, he shall enter a period where there's a lot of talk about his romantic life. Eh? <laughs> and it will be like a global thing, a global thing, it will be good. Hallelujah! That is a sign that way that you will see also. Two months later, news of UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's engagement to his longtime girlfriend dominated global media airwaves exactly as the prophet had prophesied. So we have just had this statement released to us, as you say, that the Prime Minister and Miss Simmons are very pleased to announce their engagement and that they are expecting a baby in the early summer. Carrie Simmons, uh, the girlfriend of uh, Boris Johnson, who has uh, moved into Downing Street alongside him, confirming uh, that they are expecting a baby and that they are now engaged to be married. They've announced that they are expecting a baby in the early summer of this year and that as a result, they have got engaged.
the Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Carrie Simons have married in secret. The two tied the knot in a small ceremony at Westminster Cathedral in central London on Saturday. Planned and performed in secret, the Prime Minister and Carrie Simmons celebrate their wedding that almost no one knew was happening. Downing Street releasing these pictures of the now Mr and Mrs Johnson today after marrying on Saturday afternoon. Such was the secrecy surrounding this ceremony yesterday that some senior Downing Street staff didn't even know it was happening. Meanwhile, down here at the cathedral, visitors were ushered out of the building around half an hour before Boris Johnson and Carrie Simmons made the short journey here to tie the knot in secret in front of a small number of guests before making their way back to Downing Street with virtually no one knowing it had even happened. This, among many other prophecies by Prophet Elvis Mbonyi unfolding before the masses is yet another proven sign that this unmatched prophet's word on both the nations of the world and us as individuals will surely come to pass. And as those who have been raised up in faith and the knowledge of Christ through this prophetic grace upon prophet Elvis Mbonye that preserves, enlarges, and prospers, we give double honor to the supreme authority in our generation, prophet to the nations, prophet Elvis Mbonye. fact that we continue to see everything about Boris Johnson unravel, you know, in regards to, first it was the prophecy about him being Prime Minister, Prophet Elvis Monye prophesied, it came to pass, and then he got engaged, they had a baby, and now a wedding, isn't it beautiful to know that anything that Prophet Elvis Monye says indeed comes to pass, he's sure, so if he's sure, you should be sure that anything in your life can as well come to pass. And you know, as even you continue in that celebration of this prophetic anointing, it also goes to show you that actually there is nothing hidden because this is the most sort of sec most secretive public affair yes, yeah. of an official, but yeah. yet the prophet has revealed it unto us. Now that goes to show you the caliber of anointing that we are dealing with in this place. And this caliber of anointing does not only come just to prosper, preserve, and enlarge you, but also comes to declare the unique seasons and the times yeah. of the Lord. Now, right now, we're going to take our general and prophetic offering. But I want you to be so conscious of the fact that the prophet has brought us into a very unique season. And you know, when the Lord declares a new season, you adjust your heart accordingly so that you know exactly how to maximize that particular season. Now, the Lord has showed us that in this particular season, the nature of our giving is not ordinary. We are giving from that place of sacrifice, from that place of recognizing what this anointing means to you. What does it mean to you? How devoted are you in your dealings with this anointing? Because it is not simply presenting itself for you to simply bear witness and know that it exists. He's actually drawing you nearer to the place of full devotion to this anointing. Now that is why he goes ahead to declare to us what this season means to us and what it, it's supposed to do for you. He says in the book of 1 Samuel 2.8 that the Lord raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dungeon. For what? You know, the Lord does something for the sake of something. He doesn't just remove you, remove you, remove you, raise you up, leave you here and there, then leaves you there. He says he raises you up for the sake of setting you among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. This is what, so he removes you from one place to the other place. Now that's what this season is all about. To usher us from one place into another place. And you see, you know, he goes ahead to say, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. He knows exactly the foundation of the world and he knows how to adjust it all for your own sake. Now, understand this season. That's what the Lord is doing. That is adjusting the pillars of the world for your own sake. For you as a child of God who has believed his choices prophet to know that actually there's something new that is being done in your life. Now, this happens from glory to glory as the Lord has kept on showing us that the Lord is taking you, you know, um, I, I, as he showed us earlier on that an aeroplane owner, when, she, when he looks at the person who has boarded first class, even when he looks at the pilot, eh, he feels sad. He prays for him and says, please lift up the beggar so that they can own the plane. So it happens from different levels to different levels. And he's saying that, he's taking, so don't look at yourself and say, but you see now for me, I'm not uh, poor and in the dust. I'm not, uh, using that example, you can tell. 
you know but the lord is actually altering that particular testimony to declare this particular word unto you for this particular season so you're going to take a hold of your prophetic and your general offering and see it as the tool in this particular season pay attention to this in this particular season the lord is using your money he's using what you've previously called your money your resources which he has given you to cause you to rise up he's causing you to rise up for the sake of setting you up and for the sake of causing you to inherit the throne of glory now you're ready to give i want you to keep on rejoicing magnifying the lord and remain conscious all through this particular service in this about the season that understand that every single tuesday can be tailored for you alone if you see it that way and it's for you to understand that anything that is whether prophet elvis money picks up on someone that can still be your testimony it's for you to understand that whatever happens at this pulpit whatever comes from this fellowship can as well happen in your life and it has a significant reason as to why it's even playing or happening at that very moment and because we know what the lord is doing in your life that's what I want to, want to encourage you to share your testimony your own testimony at prophetelvis.com because we know exactly what the Lord is packaging for you I know what is packaging for you the testimony of an overcomer mind-blowing encounters extraordinary personal testimonies unfolding before masses as lives and destinies are completely realigned Upon encountering the true spirit of prophecy. Towards the end of 2020, the working conditions and remuneration in my former workplace where I was as an electrical technician had deteriorated so much so that I was forced to resign in November of the same year. Before I had resigned, I had sent in an application for the same role of electrical technician in, an, in a company that had advertised in October. During the online Tuesday Fellowship of 26 January 2021, Prophet Ovi Simboni picked up on a lady and prophesied to her that it would be on a Tuesday when she would be called for a job interview. And since I was unemployed for some months, I decided to connect to this word that Prophet Elvis Simone had released. Though it wasn't me, because he said a lady and I was a man, but I decided no, I cannot let this opportunity pass by. I decided to connect it and apply it in my life also. And true to the word of Prophet Elvis Simone, it was the following Tuesday when I was contacted for a job interview I had applied for the previous year in October 2020. This one excited me and I knew the word the prophet Elvis Mboni had declared the previous Tuesday of 26 January it is unfolding in my life. A couple of weeks later, I received a call from one of the company managers informing me that I was the best candidate when they had conducted the interview. And what was required of me was to hand in my academic documents and recommendation letters recommending me for the role that I had applied for. When this happened to me, I was filled with joy and I knew Prophet Ovi Simbonye was sent of God to me. He's not a prophet like any other. Things that seem impossible, just at his word, everything realigns exactly as he had said. Come the 23rd of March, Tuesday Online Fellowship 2021 with Prophet Ovi Simbonye, I receive an email at first, as fellowship was going on, I didn't want distraction. I knew the email had come from the company. I didn't want to pay attention to the email and then lose on what the prophet was releasing for that day. Later on, after the fellowship had ended, I opened the email informing me that I had a contract awaiting my acknowledgement for the role of an electrical technician. And furthermore, in that Tuesday online fellowship with Prophet Elvis Simboni. Prophet Elvis Simboni said that people who had rent issues were going to be settled. And when I opened the email, I found that I'm offered free accommodation for this new job I'm taking up. And as if that was not enough, my salary received a 120% increment format to what I was getting with better working conditions, 
everything is exciting. I'm indeed a testament that the prophecies Prophet Elvis Mbonye gives truly come to pass exactly as he had prophesied. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Do not let your destiny hang in the balance. Share your testimonies at testimony at prophetelvis.com. You're here, your spirit in me, your anointing of a flowers making me whole. Sing Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're He's right here. Dwelling in me, dwelling in me. His fire receives. Every mountain for 
Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing great things and wondrous things in our lives, in your life. He's causing you to see His glory in you. There is no way, there is no way it's impossible for you not to experience this glory wherever you're watching us from. You know, the Lord thinks about you so much, so, so, so much that He decided to send you his greatest prophet. He decided to send me his greatest prophet. That is how much, if you want to weigh how much the Lord values and regards you, you look at who he sends in your life. You look at the choice of people and persons that he sends in your life. And for you, you must know it that he is mindful of you and he has sent you his greatest prophet. Can you imagine, you know, don't just talk about it casually and you gloss over it. You have to think about it meditatively and you ponder. And think about how much he has loved us. How much he has loved this nation. How much he has loved his church. That he has chosen to resource us as a body of Christ with the greatest gift on the earth. In Prophet Hill this morning. So that is how much love he has continued to exhibit and to show us, to manifest unto us. He sent us a prophet. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And he sent us prophet Elvis Bonye. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Now today marks a new level Amen. of glory for you. You know, let these moments mean something to you. Let these moments mean life to you. Because they are meant to, you know, they, they, they are meant to cause you to be ushered into the reality of what the Lord is thinking about you. The reality of what your life is being turned into. And you know your life is being turned into from one level of glory to the other. That's, that's all that is happening to you. There is no way you can be left behind. There is no way. There is no way. You know, put value, put value to your faith in Christ. Put value to it. Put him to task to for you to realize that actually this is why he is in my life. Where exactly is the Lord in your life? What has he come to really cause you to see? What exactly has he come to cause you to manifest, to realize, and to exude about life? What exactly is he all about in your life? And you know because you know that reality, there is no way. There is no way you can factor in yourself. There is no way you can factor in your weaknesses. There is no way you can factor in your limitation about what you can accomplish. Glory to God. You know, this opportunity that the Lord has given us today is an opportunity to continue losing. Hmm? You know, there is a privilege in losing everything for Christ. Amen. There is a privilege in losing everything to Christ. Now, this is the opportunity the Lord has given us. That's what Paul said. That he counted all things but loss for the sake of the anointing. Counted all things but loss for the sake of the anointing. That's exactly, he saw the privilege in losing everything for the sake of of the anointing. That's what it says in the book of Philippians 3 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Can you imagine that he took pride in losing all things for the sake of something? Now, that's why I'm telling you that today is the opportunity for you to lose anything and everything for the sake of the knowledge of the excellency of God. Determine with me here today to lose everything that you have for the sake of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Determine that. And you know, for you who is uh, 
you know, who you probably have just given your life to Christ. This is this, the reality of this is that the Lord wants you to only know Him. He wants you to only know Him as the only Lord and source of your life. So that when everything is taken away, He alone remains standing. You know, everything else can be shaken, but He says the word of the Lord. The Lord can never be shaken. All things can stagger here, they can stagger there. You know, the world can declare and decree loss and everything, but for you, but for you, you only know one way, which is the way upward. Your life is always going up, always increasing, always, you know, it's always, always shining. I know why it shines? Because of Christ Jesus, because of the anointing that you have received. Because of the anointing that you have received. And you see, today the Lord wants, uh, wants you to delve deeper with Him. You know, He wants you to become much more thirsty for Him. Much, much, much more thirsty for Him. To go past the stage, to go past the peripheries that you've known about life. For you to experience only and only what He wants you to know about your life. And it was never his intention for you to know any weakness about yourself, any limitation about yourself. It was never his intention. His intention has always been one solid fact. One solid fact. To see him and only him, only his reality. The scripture says, I think it must be in Isaiah 33, 24. He talks about the reality of the life of Zion. Where you've been called where you have been brought, this place of occupation, where you have been brought to exist. And he says that for you in Zion, there is a particular testimony about you. You see, life is about the testimony that you carry. Amen. It's not about the testimony that you carry. You're either carrying the testimony of the life of God or you're carrying the testimony of, you know, death. There is no two ways around it. You can't have it both ways. That is why you must make your mind up and you be so solid about what exactly you're going to experience. He says, I've put before you life and death. Choose life. As if you didn't know that you had to choose life. But he goes ahead to remind you that choose life. Choose life. Choose this life. Choose this life. So he says, what is this life? He says, and the inhabitant of Zion shall not say. There are particular things that you can say and there are particular things that you are not at least expected to say. Shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven. They Give me the NIV version. This is the testimony that you carry. No one living in Zion will say, I am ill. And the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. You get, eh? He says, no one dwelling in Zion, the place where you've been brought, Zion, where you live exactly with the Lord, the place that the Lord describes in the book of First Peter, the place where, where you've been brought, there is a reality about this life where you've been brought, a reality about the testimony that you're supposed to be having. And he says, there is no such a thing in the place of Zion where you say that I am sick. It is not there. And you see, as I speak this, I am not saying anything on my own. When the prophet sent me, he did not simply send me to represent him. I am not a representative of the prophet. I didn't come to represent him. You came to encounter the prophet. None of you knows me. This is not my meaning. You know, I just need to help some people understand this. That what you're dealing with here, who you're dealing with here, is not a representative of the prophet. You are dealing with him. Him. Himself. So take every word that comes from here as serious as it gets. He says, you just cannot be. It's impossible. That is not who you are. And you see, this is even a lesser testimony when he says that your sins, those who dwell in Zion, they shall not say that they are ill, neither shall they say that their, their sins are forgiven. The portion, your portion as a child of God, beyond this of not being sick, is that actually everything about, you know, if we saw life in the reality of what God presents it, there is not such a thing that can cause you to downgrade. Now, this is a higher reality the Lord is awakening us to. That even what you've called your sin actually comes with a reward. Read Isaiah 40. 
right? Isaiah 40, chapter 1. Verse, Isaiah 40, verses 1. He says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Says, the, says your God. Verses 2. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that I had service. Give me the King James. Proclaim, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her. Not simply speak, say, cry to her. Let her hear this, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Can you imagine that's what, that's the reward. You just read it right. He said, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now remember in the previous verse, in Isaiah 33, 24, he was talking about your sins being forgiven. But then now he comes and says, no, no, no. Actually, it was never about just the forgiveness. There was actually even a reward for your sins. And you received double for that. What you previously called your error, what you thought that you put yourself into, what you thought was your mistake, he says, I have actually come to give you double for that. And don't let any religious spirit to shake you out of that. You see, the one who is trying to condemn you never saved you. He never died for you. He doesn't care for you. What I am telling you is actually the proclamation of what the Lord is actually declaring unto you today. And don't treat this as something past which the Lord declared to, the, to Jerusalem some time ago. He says, walk with him in the now. Be with him in the now. Not in the past. He is not the Lord of the dead. There is no such a thing as the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. He's the God of the living. And he's declaring and proclaiming unto you today that actually you receive double. Everywhere you are, receive double for what you've called your sins. Now you see, this is exactly what he wanted them to know about the place where they had been called. The place where they had been brought. You see, there is no way you will be confident to stand in the healing anointing of the Lord if you're not sure that your sins have been forgiven. Because somehow you will keep on thinking that you deserve what you're getting. You see, you don't. You don't. This is the testimony of the Lord telling and proclaiming to you that you don't deserve what you think. You don't, you don't, get, you don't get what you work for. The Lord gives you always higher. He's all about blessing you. He's all about enriching you. He's all about this is the confidence of the Lord. This is the confidence of what he's bringing you into. Now, when you know this, when you know this, you can be sure this is what causes you to know that actually his, his promises in him are yea and in him, amen. That there is nothing as such as a, you know, a delayed, there's nothing like, you know, delay, wait in terms of the Lord. As long as this is his promise. As long as this is his promise. But you see, this purpose of the Lord is something the Lord is causing us to realize in this particular season. You know, when the Lord declares a season, a special season, unto the body of Christ, unto you, make this personal. When he declares unto you a special season, you must know how to adjust yourself accordingly so that you know how to walk in his purpose. So he says in verses 3, he says, The voice of him who cries in the wilderness, Prepare, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This is what the Lord, you see, when, when a minister of God is ministering unto you, he's not simply being occupied by what the Bible is saying. He's declaring to you what exactly in the realm of the Spirit the Lord is wanting us to know. Amen. He says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. Make straight in the desert a highway Amen. for our God. That there is a highway. You see, the lower way is the way of getting worried for your sins. The higher way is the way of knowing that you receive double. You receive double for what you've called your sins. That is the higher way. Now, I want us to get to, you know, determine, you know, what we are doing here is that we have determined to lose everything. What you've called your worry, what you've called your concern, 
Prepare the highway. Determine to lose. You know, count all things but loss. What I am doing here is that I am preparing a way for our God. Prepare a way for our God. And you know who our God is. Our God does not just land anywhere. He has come to visit us. He has come to visit us. But this visitation of the Lord, this visitation of the Lord requires us to be prepared in a particular way. And you know, this goes beyond just praying in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's something bigger than that. It's actually more about attuning your consciousness to know what his reality is for you in the moment. So it says, prepare a highway for the Lord, for our God. For our God. Verses 4. Every valley. Now, please take this. Personalize this. Eh? Every valley shall be exalted. Every valley shall be exalted. Amen. What you've called the laws in your life, they are all being raised up. Eh? Every mountain and hill shall be made low. Anything which has come to try to confront you, anything which has come to try to confront you, to make you think that it cannot stand, it is impossible. You know, there's a scripture in the book of Isaiah. I think it must be verses 10 of the same of the same scripture, we shall get there, where it talks about how the Lord reigns with a mighty arm. Yes. Must be verse, he says, I, he, the Lord reigns with a mighty arm. This is what it means. Eh? He says, yeah, verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Amen. When he says that every mountain is being made straight, eh? this is what he means. Amen. You are not going to be a participator in making your mountain straight. Eh? You are count yourself out of this. You are completely irrelevant. Yours is to receive his grace. How far would you go with receiving this grace, which is causing you to see this mountain leveled? So he says, go back to verses 4. He says, and the hill shall be made low, and the crook and the crooked path, you know, the crooked path shall be made straight. What you thought was, you know, moving here is so he says, This is why I'm preparing you. This is why. Let me help some people. This is why the prophet sent me to prepare the way of the Lord. Because you see, we are preparing for a visitation from the Lord. And this visitation must, must find us in a particular state, in a particular frame of mind, in a particular perspective, in a particular way of seeing things. So he says, and it shall be made straight, and the rough places, plain, smooth, smooth, smooth. Your life is all about that. Verses 5. He says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Now, what this means is that anything, the life that you live in the flesh, must see this glory. And it, it must see it. Now, you see, the Lord can only speak what he's doing. When he's speaking this, he's doing it. I am not my own. I am not my own. So when the, word, when the Lord releases these words, He's releasing them just for you. Amen. I like what Prophet Joseph Simone said that a minister of God has no authority to stand to minister if he's not speaking for God. So this is not us trying to come through the scriptures. It is God Himself personified speaking to you. It is not simply a representative. No. It is him coming to you. Coming to dwell in you. Coming to speak to you now that actually your path has been made straight. That the glory of the Lord has been released. And all flesh, your flesh is seeing it right now. You see it right now? For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Actually, I hadn't seen this. For the mouth, I hadn't. For the mouth of the, uh, glory to God, I am excited. <laughs> glory to Jesus. The mouth of the Lord, it is done. Even if we ended here. Even if we ended here. It is done. Verse 6. He says, The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. You know, he wants you to disregard your flesh. Eh? He wants you to look at. Don't put any, 
any power, any consolation, any confidence, anything in the flesh. Anything the flesh can do for you, don't put because the flesh is as grass. It withers. It withers. It withers. The flesh, what you've called your flesh, what you've called your righteousness, what you've called your right deeds, what you've called your right character, does not have any confidence in the Lord. It does not stand. It's irrelevant. And he says, as the flower of the field, verse 7, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it, surely the people is grass. Can you imagine the person you've been relying on, thinking my uncle will come through for me, my aunt will come through for me. The Lord is saying, if he's going to encounter you, if the Lord is, is to meet you, then there shouldn't be any, any flesh standing in the way. There shouldn't be any confidence in what you think you can achieve. All he's calling you to is to rely only on his grace and on his spirit. That is all it takes. That is all it takes. Take yourself completely out. You are irrelevant in, in this whole equation. Completely irrelevant. Verses 8. He says, The grass with and the flower fadeth, but the word of, the, of our God, the word of our God, the word of our God, let me say it the way Prophet of this morning would say it. Any word that comes from this mouth here right now, and you shall testify about it, you shall remember the Lord your God, who has caused you to see only his light, who has caused you to only see his testimony, who has caused you to eat the good of the land, who has expired and enlarged your tent. You shall know no worry, you shall know no sorrow, you shall know no limitation. You shall know no sickness. All things are working together for your good. You only increase and rise up. You only see this light. This is what the Lord says to you. This is how he's preparing you. For you to have an encounter with him. Now, this is the testimony of Zion. The testimony of Zion. Isaiah 11, verses 8. Isaiah 11. He said, verses 9, verses 7, sorry, 7. He says, this is the testimony of where, you see, I am preparing you. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That is the voice that cries from the wilderness. You see, when John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way for the Lord, he didn't come on his own. That is why when the father, when the prophet sent me, you know, he has sent me to this, that I may decrease and he may increase. That he alone should be seen. And he says, verses 6, verses 6, verses 5. This is, he talks about Christ. Eh? This is the testimony of Christ. Please see this as your testimony. Eh? He says, and righteousness shall be the God of his reigns, and faithfulness the God of his reigns. That is what will guard you. Eh? And the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid can you imagine this eh? this is the reality we are being brought into and the calf darkness preoccupying the world this is what the lord wants to come out how do you intend to see this if the world is not covered in darkness how he says the light shineth and darketh uh, and darkness comprehended it, comprehended it not and this is what this which I'm reading for you is what darkness cannot comprehend. It can't. You can't get this by your mental ascent. He says he can't accomplish. He can't comprehend this. So he says, and the little child shall lead them. Verse 7. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Huh? And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp of the that's a snake eh? like of a viper can you imagine you find a, a, a little baby just playing with a viper and they're no longer scared of it eh? now this is what the lord is doing eh? and the wind child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den verses nine they shall not hurt nor destroy in all of my holy mountain which is zion there shall not be destruction. When the Lord, when you're preparing to meet the Lord, you must not prepare to encounter. You're preparing to encounter restoration. 
You're preparing to encounter the fullness of his fullness. You're preparing to encounter his goodness, his mercy, his mercy. You know, know what to expect from him when you're encountering him. He doesn't prepare the way for the sake of you encountering. This is what is called the highway. The highway of the Lord is the way which no fowler knows. This way, this way where the Lord is leading us to, which is awakening us to, there is no sickness, no weakness, no disease. Even what you've called your sorrow. He says he has comforted you. He has comforted you. He's there through with you. What you've called your worry, what you've called that sorrow, that pain that you've gone through. He says, no, you are actually never a part of it. It was me carrying you through. It was me leading you through to see only my goodness. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. I can assure you, I can assure you, don't be taken up by what's out there. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. That a time has come where only one thing stands, which is the testimony of God. Now this is what this season was meant to open our eyes to. When he told us, when the Lord told us that we are, that saviors shall arise from Zion, this is what he meant. This is what it means for saviors to arise. People who know their stand in the Lord. People who know who the Lord is for them and to them. This is what exactly he meant. This is what it means for you to arise as a savior. You arise as a savior. The knowledge of the earth fills the whole world. As the waters cover the sea. Verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and this rest shall be glorious. That the ultimate of all this is for the Lord to bring us to a place of rest. Amen. Where there is no struggle. But you see, how are we going to access this rest? How are we going to access this rest? Because yes, he has given us a promise. He has showed us where we are supposed to be. But then, how do we access this promise? Give me the scripture in the, in the book of Hebrews which says, All things work together. All things work together. All. Where is the scripture? All things work together. <clears throat> Verses 27. Romans 8, 27. He says, and he that searches the hearts knoweth that is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to what? You see, when the spirit of God is making intercession, he makes intercession according to the will of God. That one, first have it in your mind. Eh? That everything the spirit of God is intending to cause you to see. When you're interceding, when you're engaging the Spirit of God, it is to the extent of realizing the will of God. Because it says, He only makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, not according to their will. Not according to their will. So what does that call for? Surrender. That you no longer have a will of your own. You don't have a will of your own. Your will, what you've called your will, is engrafted in Christ. You no longer have a will of your own. You no longer want to. You see, when, when the prophet is extending that healing grace to us, it is because it is the will of the Lord. Eh? When you're seated listening to me, it's not because it is your will. Because you see, your will cannot sustain you to listen to these words because they don't come from, from the world, from the earth. They come from above. The spirit which is speaking to you, which is reminding you of the faithfulness of the Lord, is calling you up to this place because he wants you to awaken to the will of the Lord. When he says, prepare ye the way of the Lord, he says it means that prepare to, to get to know his will. Prepare to encounter his will. 
what has been the will of the Lord for you in this season? What, what exactly is his will? So he says, verses 28, he says, and we know, we are aware, we are awake, we are awake that all things work together for good to them that do what? That love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. That there are people who are called according to the purpose of God. Now, you can't claim this scripture that all things work together for good if you're not moving in his purpose. Eh? It's not your scripture. So most people get excited and say, you know, all things are working for, working for your good according to his purpose. Because that's how he called you. He will not do it outside his purpose. And his purpose for your life has been wrapped up. Your purpose, his purpose for your life has been wrapped up in Christ Jesus. But you see, you can even take it higher. That Christ is the anointing. And this anointing is specific to you. You can as well say it this way. That your life, the purpose of your life has been wrapped up in the anointing upon Prophet of this morning. Yeah. That is actually a greater reality for you. Eh? The other one, I'm helping somebody who is just, you know, becoming born again, understanding the eh, purpose of Christ and what. That is, you know, eh? and then he introduces you to this anointing, which he says, now that's your purpose. So what does that call for? When he says, prepare either way, he's actually meaning, awake to what I called Prophet Elvis Simbonye to be to the world. Awake to what I called him to be to the nations. Awake to it. And you see, what he's accomplishing is what Christ is accomplishing. This is what he's awakening to. So when you say all things, you can be sure that if today you made up a man and said, now I surrender my will. Remember where we began from? We said we have an opportunity to lose all things. And today we lose, his, we lose our will. To only receive his will. To only know his will. Verses 29. For whom he did for one know, he also pre, before one knew you, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many what? Among the world? No, no, read. Among the world? among many brethren that the Lord to awaken you to this place he's awakening you to be above your brethren that you who is a remnant of God you who has believed prophet of Simbonye, you're being awakened to a reality above the church will see us and realize that we're not at their level they will see us and know that we are different people that we are a unique people we are from above. You say with me, I am from above. I'm from above. I'm an alien to the world. My experience is the experience of God. Glory to Jesus. And you know why you must celebrate this? <clears throat> because it's telling you that be of good cheer, says the Spirit of the Lord. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be not worried about how your tomorrow will turn out. Be not worried about anything that concerns you. For I, the Spirit of God, have got it covered. I have got it sorted. I have accomplished it. There is nothing that you will know of yourself which is of yourself. All you will know will be my reality. All you will know will be my grace. All you will know will be my pattern. I fashion your world. I fashion your world. To only see the glory of the Lord. To only see my glory. Only my glory shall you know. Only my power and my essence shall you know. Only my reality shall you know. Only my way shall you know. For the world will say unto you that you have walked a highway. You have taken a highway where no fowler knows. Where no wickedness knows. You have taken a highway right now which causes you to see my world. Which causes you to see my beauty which causes you to awaken to my goodness. My mercy and my love becomes your portion. You take a hold of it. You dominate the world by it. You see only this goodness. It alters everything in your life. Whatever has been a weakness turns into a strength. 
Whatever has been a weakness becomes your strength. Where there has been sickness, there is now a healing. Where there has been poverty, now you receive the richness of the Lord. You become a testimony to the world. You become my witness, says the Lord. For the world shall know you for this power. The world shall look at you and know that this is why we believe. This is why we believe the Lord. This is why we need the Lord. This is why we must believe his prophet. Says the spirit of the living God. Says the spirit of the living God. Glory to Jesus. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are, Lord, you are Lord, you more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than them. Nothing. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. You see, wherever you are, wherever you are, the Spirit of the Lord is moving upon you. I want you to declare these words. Sing them with understanding. Let it not just be a good rhythm unto you. Mean these words to Him. Mean these words to Him. Be consumed. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. Everything is sorted. Everything is sorted. Tell him nothing. God is nothing I desire. Lord, nothing I desire. Nothing I desire. Tell him nothing I Tell him, Lord, you are, Lord, you are my Lord, you are, precious than silver. Lord, you are. Worship the Lord, raise your hands and surrender to Him. Receive his glory now. 
you for today for your glory and your grace which has empowered us we thank you that even today you accomplished something anew in our lives that wherever from all the nations which are watching right now restoration comes to them healing comes to them Amen. your glory takes over them Amen. they will not know any worry they will not know any sorrow father Amen. we bless you today because you've caused us to see your vision to see your will to know only your agenda we know ourselves only by how you know us we bless you father for all things are done we stand in this very authority to declare and decree that all things bow down Amen. to your will Amen. that all things bow down to your authority Amen. we glorify you father and magnify you in the name of jesus Wherever you're watching us, the Lord has given us this privilege, this honor, and this, this love he has shown unto us by giving us his greatest prophet. Amen. And we are going to demonstrate this honor right now by taking our general and prophetic offerings. Amen. You know, these particular offerings we take at this particular time are meant for you to consolidate that which the Lord is releasing and has released unto you. This is how you tap into this very spirit of faith to acknowledge that actually only him matters, only him is Lord in my life. So right now, we shall take our general and prophetic offering. has gone before us and labored, toiling before dawn, clearing out all the obstacles in the journey for the yield to ripen until finally. Hallelujah, you have overcome us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Overcome us. Hallelujah. Prophet Elvis Mbonye is one sent of God to lay the foundation for world domination such as never seen before. Partner with Prophet Elvis Mbonye and enjoy the benefits of this great yield as an overcomer. Join the heirs of gold for a special partnership meeting Saturday, June 12, 2021, 10 a.m. Live online at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. To become an heir of gold, visit our website at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. It's a lifestyle. 
to all the overcomers that have been watching thank you so much for tuning in we know that you've been blessed and thank you so much for always making it a point to watch thank you so much as well for always inviting someone out there to watch and be blessed by the words of prophet elvis Simone. now don't forget to follow him on all his social media platforms you can always get to know more about him on his website those are the only ones that you can find prophet elvis Simone. check out also the website also find out more about the prophecies what he has said about different things because every single time we are launched into more glory into a refreshing grace and glory that we can only understand as those that have come across the greatest prophet of the nation now from all of us thank you so much for watching continue being blessed now fellowship doesn't just end today actually we have so much more that goes on into all those social media platforms that belong to prophet elvis money on behalf of prophet elvis money i love to say have a good night and a blessed day hallelujah let the sound of